Hello and welcome to a brand new video tutorial for 3ds Max Avenue. So here we are in Max and I want to show you a technique on how you can easily place your 3D objects into an HDRI environment. So here is my scene. I downloaded some bricks from polygon.com. I created a plane where we use as a shadow catcher later on and a camera. And of course, the HDRI, okay? Um, to place the objects now into this HDRI, there is a very good tool that is available in Chaos Corona. And this technique works as well for Cinema 4D because Chaos Corona now, the versions uh, from Max version and the Cinema version are identical. So every step that you see here in Max will be work as well at Cinema 4D if you are a Cinema 4D user. For the Lightwave users, probably there is no Corona for Lightwave, um, but there will be another solution to achieve this effect, okay? So, but now we are in Max and we do this in Max, okay? So, so the first thing that we have to do now is to open up the material editor. And in Max, it is the M key on your keyboard. Just open up the material editor, okay? So you need a Corona bitmap node where you can load in your HDRI. If you don't see this node, you just can go to the Corona, um, Corona map, and then just click and drag a Corona bitmap node into the editor view. And it's asking you where is the HDRI placed. So you can load in here the HDRI. By the way, uh, the Corona bitmap is also used for loading in textures for your object, okay? Not only for HDRI. The reason that I use the Corona bitmap for HDRI is because it contains just one value to rotate the HDRI. And it's a bit handier than the HDRI map from Max. The next step that you have to do to actually see the HDRI into the viewport is you have to press the 8 key and it's open up the environment and effects panel and here you have to plug in the HDRI in this slot okay by just clicking on this output dot and place it in here so it's asking you if you want to create a copy or an instance just use instance for that and if you already have loaded in an HDRI in the slot, you can do the vice versa trick and click from here to here. And it's asking you the same thing, instance or copy, just press OK. I fire up the Corona render view, perfect. And as you can see now that the HDRI is set up in the environment mapping to spherical, which is absolutely normal if you want to lit up your scene with an HDRI, okay? So as you can see that my scene is perfectly lit by this HDRI. So what the spherical projection mode does actually, it's creating a dome, a 360 dome around a global sphere, which is huge, okay? It's basically, it's going to the infinity, okay? But what we want to place our objects into this HRI, we need a, a function that it's create a kind of a local dome around our scene. And this is now implemented into Chaos Corona. So you can change the mode here to dome. And as you can see now, it's creating a kind of a local dome around our scene, right? And the good thing is it's cutting the floor part. And this is super handy because now we can replace the floor 
material, a texture, um, with another texture, right? And we still have the 360 environment from our HRI. Okay, so let's do that. So first we need a Corona material and it's called a Corona Shadow Catcher material. So bring that in and apply that material to the plane. There we go. And now we have to tell the Shadow Catcher the projection mode. So now we set the screen projection onto geometry and we need to change that environment projection onto geometry. Okay, and now it's asking for an HDRI backplate and we just can plug in this in here. And as you can see now that the floor, the shadow catcher, recognized the HDRI and the HDRI will be projecting correctly to our floor as well. But the dimensions or the size is not correct. Okay, so we fix that. Click on the Corona bitmap node, and as you can see here, the dome mode, the radius. Okay, so now the radius is set to two meters. So we want to increase that to, let's say, about thousand, which is ten meters for now. And the camera height value we can find out by switching back or out of the full screen mode by pressing Alt V key, select the camera, and in the Y axis, we see that the camera is 47 centimeters above the ground, okay? So we need this value, copy, and place the value into here, camera height, paste, and now it looks way better, okay? But we are still in the perspective view. When we switch back to our camera, the object is placed correctly on the floor of the environment. And this is really, really cool, right? And it works perfect. The only thing you will see here in the back, you have still this stretching, okay? Um, this technique will not remove this stretching effect on the edge totally. You will always have a little bit of stretching or squishing the, in, uh, the texture, the HRI texture, a little bit in the back. You can cover this by adding some other 3D elements in front of that seam, right? Or you can play around with depth of field or you tilt the camera until you don't see the seam. Uh, for example, this angle here, it works just perfect, okay? But to demonstrate you how you can fix that stretching a little bit, um, I want to place my camera somewhere here and to fix that at least a little bit, you can play around with the radius of the dome, okay? By decreasing it, okay? So we say about, I just watching uh, on this part there, which it should come up again. So now it's not so squished anymore. And that looks better, okay? And just change the camera angle a little bit. Something like that. And that looks better, okay? So now what I do is I change the camera settings. I change from field of view to focal length 
and let's change that to 85 millimeter lens and this alone it changes or it fixes this stretching even more which is cool and then i turn on depth of field and i choose my object as a focus point and then i change the f-stop let's say 5.5 to give a little bit of a blur in the back and now we have our render okay we have our bricks they're sitting perfectly on the ground of this hdri we have a depth of field in the back and the stretching is no strong not so strong even more um but just catching out this effect a little bit more and that's basically it that's the end of this tutorial so i hope you learned something and you like this tutorial uh, please comment like and subscribe my youtube channel please feel free to also follow the 3ds max avenue page on facebook if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and uh, for that i say thank you for listening thanks for watching and see you next time bye everyone